In this video we're going to look at creating 3000 NFTs using Python code and we're going to upload those files to IPFS so that we can sell them on OpenSea or Rarible. Okay, so this is the bit where we create the basic images which we then create composites from. So let's just start with background and in Photoshop you can turn layers on and off. And if you want to create a new layer, then you go up to new and uh, new layer. So treat each of these rows as a piece of tracing paper. You probably can't read the labels. I've just labeled them and saved them with those same names. So I've got what, 25 or 30 here. So as you turn each one of them on, um, obviously it builds up kind of what we will actually get as our output. So we're obviously going to randomize this. Um, so there we've got the cigarette, the monocle, the gold tooth, and a scar. Right, just need to go and fix that. That's, um, you need to make sure that your images are kind of um, cleaned up. Just going to... Um, I didn't know that that was not so not so neat so I think I need to use I'll turn off all the other images so that I'm not gonna corrupt them and I've got an error message somewhere which is could not complete your request when you have several screens Photoshop sometimes pops up your an error message on a different screen to what you're expecting uh, Not that one. That one? Yeah. Okay, so then we just need to go and use the eraser to select the layer. And there we go. I mean, the whole point of these um, crypto heads is that they're <laughs> bad. But obviously, some things just are too bad to, the, to, even, to even use. So... Um, Let's just make the eraser a little bit smaller. A bit more detail. No, one's not enough. Let's go for two. There we go. So just tidying this up. And these images, um, some of them I drew. And some I've obviously found on on a search engine, should we call it. <laughs> um, so there we go. Just neatening that up so we're gonna end up with um when we look go across back to vs code i will have saved each of these features it's got a category so um obviously i've got a folder called hair with five different types of hair in i've got um one called skin so five different skin colors and each one of those is going to be randomly chosen so I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five categories, which I've got five things inside. So I think that should give me what's well, five to the power of five. Anyone got a calculator? So five times five is twenty-five. Times five is one two five. Uh, times five is six two five. Times five is about. 3,000 and something. So already, and then times five again, so that should take us up to about 15,000 unique images, which is more than we need. I don't know why the NFTs are always 10,000. Um, I have seen some that are, a few that are just set to maybe um, 1,000. Right, that's done. So. Just to show you what I did with these then is because I've created um, another category today. So I'm oh, sorry that this is so small. I don't think I can make it any bigger in Photoshop, but what we'll do is turn off all the other images. And now I need to save. So we've got extras. So save, uh, export actually, isn't it? Export, quick export. I did call it 
spliff but I'm, I'm actually going to change that so let's make a new folder uh, extras I give the folders a capital letter and then the inside ones I call them lowercase extras one now turn that off turn number two on and export quick export Um, I've got this is really important you've got to keep all the file names consistent because this is going to be what gets referenced in your code and to be honest you don't need to know what it's called so you don't need to know that it's a monocle um, is at the end of the day it's the code that's using this um, as long as you kind of got the, the categories make sense and you don't have two things with two different categories which kind of conflict with each other um, for instance if you had I don't know hair um, a category called hair and a category called um, hats potentially one could conflict with the other or a skull tooth and uh, what's five? Oh, five is the nose ring so export quick export so we're gonna finish I'm just gonna finish this off here I just thought I'd show you what I did in Photoshop I know it's not strictly Pythonic or Python related but um, it's obviously crucial to this project and really at the end of the day it, it, not everything has to be Python obviously we're using we, Python's a tool which um, helps us get stuff done and what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a project with uh, let's just save that as well save and close and don't want to save any of the other images good so what I'm going to do now is uh, what's going on here uh, sorry about that um, I'm going to come over here I'm going to I'm going to zip up this NFT folder And I get sent to compressed. I've already done one in, when I was testing, so let's call it NFT uh, final. Right. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to send that across to Google Drive, and um, then what I'll do is I'll start incorporating that into the code and testing. While we're here, I just want to show you this. I forgot to include, or I didn't forget, but I just didn't include it in my other video. It's um, so we've we've looked at the command line version of IPFS, Interplanetary File System, and this is the uh, graphical user interface for IPFS, and I, it's not connected at the moment. I've not done IPFS in it and all that good stuff but there we see is uh, is it discovering some pairs there we go so um, just to link all of this up if you're new to this what we've done is we've created multiple images in different categories using Photoshop we'll run our Python code and that will create numerous random composites of those as you might have seen in earlier videos once we've got whatever number we decide to settle on, whether I settle on 100, 1,000, 10,000, it makes no difference. I'll probably go for 10,000 because that seems to be the norm. Um, then what we'll do is we will either we will look to use either IPFS itself or something like NFT.storage, which actually uses IPFS anyway. And that's where that's what we will be using as per the previous video that's what we'll be using to make distributed copies of our final um, images of what will become our nfts because you don't want link rot you don't want a broken link if you pay good money to buy an nft so yeah ipfs there we see it's all it's all running so i didn't show that last time i think i was probably um slowly i was I was so relieved I'd got it working on the Raspberry Pi. I didn't show you it working on um, 
on Windows, but um, yeah, there we see this is gradually, it will gradually put more and more blue. And obviously because at a time of day, it's kind of the morning in the UK. So I guess America's not got all of their, they're probably all still asleep. And there's a few over in China who've been up for hours. So there we go, that's IPFS on Windows. So really that's just kind of a dashboard that lets you see how many other nodes are online so anyway enough about that let's uh let's stop that there and move back to vs code okay so just to uh check with that you're not watching the wrong video <laughs> hopefully this is what you're here for so these are some i made earlier but uh, they're not the final version because I didn't quite have enough different categories. So here I've made approximately a hundred different, um, I've called them crypto heads. I wanted to call them crypto punks, but that was already taken. So as you can see, each image should be unique. Well, it's unique, I can tell you that for nothing because what I've done in the code is I've, I've kept a list of the numeric combinations of the asset, well I call them, I think everyone calls them assets. So a hat is an asset, a hairstyle is an asset, a skin color is an asset. So each of those different folders as you just saw in Photoshop for that. And each of those assets gets given a number and then I create, I concatenate those numbers to give me basically a unique uh, serial or a unique ID and then I create a list of those IDs and then throughout the for loop we then check if that random ID has already been generated before we proceed to actually create the image so you might see some that are very similar like that one and that one but obviously this one here has got the pink lipstick um, you might see some very, very similar and one I'll have a, a green nose, runny nose. Um, yeah, so you can, you can look at these all day and it'll drive you mad, but in actual fact, you won't find any duplicates there and there. That's uh, the one with the blue cap and the, the brown skin. That's so that one's got purple eye shadow and that one's got kind of um, red eyes. So uh, yeah, if you find a jib, well, you won't find a duplicate, but if you did, you would be, uh, <laughs> you, you would probably be wrong. You would need to go back and, ch and just check the differences. So that's, um, I think I actually made about 125 there. And uh, hopefully this is what, let me just zoom in a bit more. No, I can't do it. Um, let's just open one at random. So hopefully this is what you're here for. NFTs using Python code. So this was the code which made all of those. And it needs a little bit of adjustment now that I've created the extra assets so just to show you what happened earlier when I ran this the first time um, I had these assets so background emotion eyebrows hair skin and spliff so that's what I could actually do is delete I need to delete that entire folder let me just um, just make this slightly let's just zoom in slightly hopefully that's that's better for you to to see so I, I don't know whether um, anyone's got any preference for um, let's go for, yeah if anyone's got any preference for screen color um, I find it hard to see the brackets when it's on a white screen, actually. I'm gonna change that back. Uh, what did I call it? 
There's so many themes out there. Has anyone got a really good one? Because I'm using that one at the moment called Nocto, which I've... Yeah, let's stick with that. Right, so... As you can see, I've put in some conditional logic to say if it's got... Uh, I'm pasting in basically loads of different um, layers on top of each other. Um, background, hair, emotion, and spliff. So this has all been kind of, um, what should we call it? MVP? Does anyone know that? Minimum viable product. Right, now without further ado, let's um, go to here and just go man, NFT1 and yeah so that's the old NFT directory which is now going to be replaced let's delete that yeah extract here and now we should have extras yeah in fact, extras should have spliff inside it and let's go and delete just to tidy that up. That's the original Photoshop document. So now we've got uh, six categories. Background we won't need. So um, Apologies, you've not seen that. Um, background, emotion, extras, eyebrows, hair, skin. Joey, that's the name of my original Photoshop document. So, um, background. Let's just keep this down here, actually. I'll, I'll keep this always on top. So, background, then we've got hair, emotion, Um, so what I'm going to do is remove that line spliff and we remove this conditional logic here for spliff and I thought by actually um, updating this on this video you could actually see how it's all kind of how it's all put together um, good right so skin hair Emotion. So now we've got to put in. Let's copy that line and change emotion to um, eyebrows, and that's going that. So this here, this this path needs to match. In fact, I've done it here with an absolute path. I think that was during my... When I was having some issues and I was testing it. In actual fact, you don't need the full path. You could get away with the relative path. But uh, I'll stick with this format. And eyebrows. So that needs to be... Instead of emotion, that needs to be... Eyebrows. So what I've just typed there needs to match that the folder name down here then instead of emotion then it's um, this is the actual file name so I browse underscore and then the numeric value because this numeric numeric value is going to be randomly generated and <laughs> so this is where the randomness happens and let's do that so uh, eb eyebrows equals random dot randint one to five. So I'm creating a random number for each of these um, assets, as if you would call them. Need a bracket there. Right. So emotion eyebrows hair. Uh, oh, did I got rid of? I think I've accidentally removed skin, so we need two more of these. I think we need uh, we need one for hair, and we need one for extras. So 
that. So we'll have one called skin extras skin skin. I think they were all lowercase in skin. Yep. And um, ah, no, I made a mistake there. Skin was already done with background. That's. I need to change that. Um, no, it works. I'll leave it. Okay. So eyebrows extras. Just change that extras, extras. So um, I know I've got six different directories, but actually skin and background are effectively the, the same thing. So then we just have emotion and we have hair, emotion, eyebrows and extras. So those four we have on top of skin. So skin hair emotion eyebrows extras good skin hair emotion eyebrows uh, then we need to put in another one for extras so that's ex equals random dot randint one five okay so hopefully that makes sense um background equals skin. <laughs> um, then what we do is we paste on then uh, paste the randomly chosen layer from each category to build up the composite. So we've got, so what we're doing is we're taking background and then we just keep adding on top of background. So we go um, hair, emotion, and then we just need to do eyebrows and extras. And background page. So as you can see, emotion is the name of our variable. So then we do eyebrows. And uh, not not is just the uh, x y coordinate eyebrows where we paste it in. Uh, we wouldn't want to do anything else; it would mess the whole thing up. Extras. Good. So we've got extras, extras, extras. Uh, eyebrow. Eyebrows. Emotion. Hair. What are we missing? No, that's right. So we have five. We have our background, which is the skin, and then we uh, then we overlay four other layers. So those four layers are added to the background. So we use background dot paste the paste method, and then we output it to the we output the PNG files to output, and then I had some issues, and I wasn't sure whether. I needed to be using JPEG or PNG, so I added in um, OpenCV2, CV and I actually now I create PNG files in output folder, and in output folder two, I then convert those PNGs to um, image quality 100 JPEGs. So it's passing that variable, which is this, which is uh, this. CV2, OpenCV2 is reading the PNG file, and then that PNG file is then being um, converted using ImageWrite to a JPEG or JPG file extension. So then, one more thing, we just need to add back in. We need to, so now we're tracking a 
A E M E X. We're tracking a four digit serial number. And you see this here on line 16, it's, it's used with line 43. So on each iteration, I'm creating this four, it's not actually a number really, it's just four consecutive integers, each representing which category has been chosen and then that gets checked so if if a string or an f string with these four um, characters is not in the list the id list um, then it'll run else it prints duplicate. Um, just I just put that in so that I could see that it was definitely working. So <laughs> I'm just thinking now, do I actually do this on 10,000? I think for the sake of this video, just for just for just for the hell of it, we're going to try and make 10,000. So. Before I do that, I'm just going to move uh, that directory out of the way. Let's do Control Shift E, and this is, this directory is a little bit uh, congested, and it probably needs tidying up. But um, so output, okay, output's got loads in it. So is output two. Um, you can delete that zip file now. I'll explain what some of these other files are later. Um, I think I'll do it in Explorer, it'll be safer. So I just need to come into project directory and output. And I just need to check my hard drive space before I try and make 10,000 as well. In fact, I'm thinking, should I just delete those two directories? Yeah. Gone. Output. So output is where the PNG files go, and output two is where the JPEGs will go. I just need to, and when I was testing, I left in a, um, a sleep timer. No, I didn't. That was something else. Apologies. Right. Okay. So let's just make that a bit bigger. I think um, what I'll do is I'll get rid of this sidebar. And we'll bring up terminal because we will need to see that what the um, duplicates being created. And what we'll also do is um, Actually, let's just do a, a df minus h. Just check what space we've got. Um, 16 gig on SDA5. That's my SSD, which we're running Linux Mint from, so. 16 gig should be plenty. Right, okay, enough. Right, drum roll, let's run it. And no such storage extras 5.png. I think I've named one of my. I think I've named one of my files without a space, so. Um, NFT extras. Something's not matching, is it? Ah. Hopefully you can see that. Um, on line 23, I didn't put in that underscore. So let's try again. I've, I'm just trying to um, get the output folder ready to quickly drag across to show you that, show you the output. Right, let's try and run again. And there we go.
<laughs> what are we up to? It's um, 200. Four hundred. I'm only reading it out because the, the font's quite small, but um, did I leave in the um, eleven hundred actually? No, I didn't. I changed it to ten thousand, didn't I? Yeah, ten thousand. So. There we go, we're up to two and a half, three thousand. Ah, what's going on? Six two five. So five times five times five times five. Okay, that's only done it for we've only gone up to five to the power of four. What's uh, so five times? Uh, I think we need more categories if we want to do ten thousand. Or e ah, let's add in eb. Just see, I've I thought I thought I should get more than. If I change this now, we should then get um, three thousand. 120, I don't know, we should get, th right, S-K-H-A-E-M-E-B, let's add an E-B here, and background paste motion, eyebrows, excuse E M E B E M E B. Good. Okay. So let's. Uh... <laughs> I'm just going to. Um... Did oh wow! I got the output. It converted the. Um... Converted the JPEGs as well. All right. Out. I need to code this. <sighs> Output two. Right, now if I run this again now, I should get, if I can bring this across onto the top, and you can see that's empty, and you can see how quickly this runs, which is kind of what I'd quite like to show. That's always on top, yeah. Right, now if I run this, you'll see how quickly this, this runs. It's very quick, isn't it? So I'm going to just um, leave that running. And we should get at least 3,000 this time. All unique, remember. Although those two look very similar. Ah, oh, that one's got a nose ring, like. That one's got a nose ring. And. 283. What's the difference? Oh, I think I've done some, I think eyebrows will be different, but they're so small you can't see them. Oh, that, that needs to change, so. Um, so there, you can just about see the red eyes on 282. Okay, red eyes on 28. Hmm. 
Hmm. Ah, maybe it's... Have we got any with the... Um... Ah, I think I know what's happening. We've got we've got um, a new feature which was the scar on the neck, and I think it's the one with the really long hair obscuring that. Hmm. I'm expecting this to stop around about now. Is it going to stop around about 3,000 something? Because each time you add in an extra category, it should um, multiply the number of output files by five. Eight, two and nine, eight look similar as well. Can't quite tell from here. I need to uh, On um, <laughs> what I need to do actually is actually uh, could I save the files with the ID number? And then we just need to think about whether we're going to change the name, the file name, or not. I'm hoping it's going to stop around about. Uh, why is it carrying on? That's, let's get the calculator. Uh, calc. Uh, sorry about this. Calc. 5 times 5 times 5. That will give us 125. Times 5 will give us 625. Times 5 equals 3125. Times 5. Five equals maybe it's going to make us sixteen thousand. Then is it still going? Oh no, it should have stopped on ten thousand because that was the um, the for loop. The for loop was stopped at ten thousand. So okay, so nine nine eight seven. And why is it stopped at nine nine eight seven? I'm thinking it's because there have been. Nine nine nine. Let's just sort this and then sort by name. Yeah, so it's skipping when, as it's coming across the duplicate, so it's not creating an image. So if I go up to output and I check the properties of output folder, three thousand and one items. Okay, so I think it mathematically, I think it was trying to make, let's get this calculator back up again. Uh, I think it was trying to make 3125, which, which is what I thought it was trying to do. So instead of th making 3,125, 3, it's only actually made 3,001. That's because 124 times there have been duplicates. Um, so that's fine. If we wanted to make even more of these, I think 3,000 is enough to be honest, but if we wanted to make 10,000, um, we would just add in another category with five more things in it. And um, to be honest, if we wouldn't need five, we, we could probably get away with. Well, four would be enough. Four times three thousand give us twelve thousand NFTs. So, yeah, I'm just gonna um, I, I'm just gonna go back. Was it? Uh, let me write that stat this down. Two eight. I think it was two eight 
two and two eight three because they look so similar. I'm just going to go back and check those. Check that they're not duplicates. Okay, so this was uh, bothering me because I um, I was convinced that I had some two duplicates and I actually have. So if you look at this one, this is two eight three, and hopefully you can see it at the top. At the very top, you can see. 282, 283, they're both identical and I've gone back and checked the code and if you look on line 21, 22 and 23 I've made an error so I need to keep these, these are each run the random numbers for each asset or each um, kind of feature and I've done SK correct for skin, HA for hair, EM for emotion and this should be you want a random number for eyebrows and you need the random number for extras so <laughs> I think I'm, I'm convinced that will fix it so what I'm going to do is I'm just um, so my neighbour's using a really loud saw. I hope you can't hear it. Um, output. Output two. That's always on top. Yeah. Right, let's run this again. And we should get approximately 3,000 images again. There we go, look at all those wonderful crypto heads being generated. Um, so I think if we run this, now we're running this again, although we've told it to make, to iterate through 10,000, um, because we're doing five to the power of four? Is it five to the four? Five times five, 25 times four. Five, one, two, five. So, so it's five cubed equals one, two, five. Ah, uh, yeah, five to the four equals six, two, five. Five to the five equals three, one, two, five. So yeah, if I wanted to to get up to ten thousand, I would need to add in another category or add in some extra features into some of my my folders so I'm happy with 3,000 images that's that's plenty to be getting on with but if you wanted to make 10,000 then you just need to add in maybe you'd add, add in a couple of extra hair types or a couple of different um, skin colors or whatever in fact if I did that I would actually then be doing 3,000 if I had just six in one category, would that then even make it? Um, five to five. What's um? I can't do the maths right now, but um. Anyway, that would give you your ten thousand. You just need to, instead of one to five, just add in a, a sixth or a seventh and then you would increase the numbers significantly. So um, that's still running, is it? Output. What are we up to? 2000. Oh, we're nearly there. So hang in there, hang in there viewers. We're about to get 3000 unique crypto heads, NFTs. So well, this is, although this is sort of quite cartoon-like and crude, hopefully you can get the idea that this, they look quite similar, 2598 two, and 262. 2598. That's got a nose ring and I think the eyebrows will be different. So nose ring, red eyes and 
Ah, uh, gold tooth look and a runny nose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, now I've tweaked the code. I'm 99%, 99.9% certain you will not find any, any identical. Now you see. Even when you think you found an identical one, I would be very, very confident that you won't have. So, uh, it's 529826. Yeah, so you see nose ring, gold tooth, scar. Okay, so let's just um, wrap this up and just check what we've got. It must be nearly. Oh, okay, so I'm not very good at the maths on this, so it's still going. I think it's actually going to make the 10,000. It is, because it's going to iterate through them. Previously, it fell over because I was using EM in line 21, 22, and 23. Now we've got the correct... <sighs> Six thousand. Let me just can I zoom in on these? It's so busy, I don't I think I'm gonna crash. Oh there we go. <laughs> I'm playing with fire here because I'm I'm probably gonna I'm risking crashing the machine at this rate, but there we go, eight thousand, nine thousand. If we get the if we get up to ten thousand, oh we've got nine nine eight five. Okay. Let's just get the properties on output folder. Yeah, two nine nine eight items. Let's just check output two. Should be the same. Yeah, two nine nine eight items. So, yeah, the, my original maths was correct. If you do five to the power of five, you get three one two five. Now, out of three thousand one hundred twenty-five, we obviously got a hundred and. 27 duplicates so it didn't actually create the image so as I say add more features if you want to get up towards 10,000 you would just add in a couple more um, skin colors or whatever um, add in some extras like a spliff or some sunglasses or whatever. Monocle, spliff, there you go. Right, good, so this is the code to make as many images as you want. The reason why it's, um, <sighs> I might as well just set that back to 3125 because it's 3125. So five to the power of five images create. Um, to be honest, I've, I I don't see any benefit in creating any more than three thousand right at this moment. This is the code which we are <sighs> that we're um, concerned with. So good, right? Okay. So next. Um, I just want to show you the going back to, or it's a follow-up. Let's open sidebar. As a follow-up to um, some earlier things, we had, I think I showed you the word grab, didn't I? Where we were basically getting um, two words from, or we're getting a list of words from using requests, and then we were just getting random uh, two words, so we weren't actually using. We were using this inside 
Um, can't remember what I used it inside, but we were calling this from another file. And this is just how to create a two word name, a random two word name. So um, do a list comprehension for iron range up to two um, words dot random int between naught and the length of the words uh, the words dictionary no the words list sorry so if the word list has got 10,000 then you go from 0 to 10,000 randomly pick one and then you do that twice and then you join it together and then you return a name so that was word grab and the other thing I want to show is I'm just going to pause it here because I don't want to show my API key just bear with Okay, so this was the um, uploader, and what this does is this uploads the <laughs> 3,000 or however many images you've got um, from, you see, path is output to. So what I'm doing is, um, I'm just, I've, there's the assert there, just checking that the output folder exists, because if it doesn't, then you're not going any further. Um, output to, so that's the folder with all the JPEGs in, um, and I'm creating a login file. The reason why I'm doing that is because, so there's the headers, um, what I'm using is I'm using requests and I'm using requests with post, um, there you see on line 30, and what it's doing is it's connecting to um, api.nft.storage forward slash upload. Um, so as I showed in the previous video, that is where you store your images and that gives you the the IP the access to the IPFS interplanetary file system, which means that you're not going to be having issues where you know Google or Amazon or whatever just go down or delete your folder or start charging you or whatever. So because of this, this is distributed. So thir line 31 means that your images are fully distributed around hundreds of nodes, as we saw when we looked at IPFS in Windows Explorer. Um, so this function, um, it takes the image, it opens the image, it reads the bytes of the image, and then it, it saves that as the data, and then Headers is the headers, which is authorization, is the key, and then you put bearer space and then your API key. Um, so that's the function, and then within that function, it also writes to the log file. The reason you need the log file is for if you then go on to create the JSON file, which will allow you to um, work with Solidity and create, your, upload, do a batch upload with all of your own details. I'll show you why the mode, the login file is important. What it's done is it's it's captured the file name and it's also captured the CID. <laughs> I've forgotten what the CID is. The, con the content ID yeah, I think it's the content addressable ID, isn't it? Content addressing. Because what the whole the difference between this is we're using content addressing rather than location addressing. Location addressing is where you use HTTPS forward slash my server forward slash images. Content addressing says just go and look for B A K F R E I D on the IPFS file system. Big difference. So Location addressing is basically HTTPS. Content addressing is IPFS, which uh, looks across many, many nodes. It's not just trying to find one server, which is one single point of failure, which anyone knows about networking or aviation. <laughs> you always want at least two of something. Right, okay, so that's that's the um, uploader which uploads all the images and what I'm going to do now is just show you what I did yesterday. Run, uh, I won't run the script again because it takes a while and I don't want to overload an ft.storage with rubbish so I'm just going to show you that what I did yesterday. Right so NFT storage with this pretty old school. I like it. 
old school kind of graphics and old school, I think that's like the old school Mac font, isn't it? And this is the new, the lovely new GitHub thing where it sends you your six digit ID to factor authentication and all that. Don't even attempt to copy this because it's going to be out of date when you try it. Right, this has taken me to my kind of my account with hopefully I don't know how many uploads I think I only did a hundred so just testing really but I was using my uploader script as I've just shown you using um, requests with post there we are so if we go on to here and um, so you've got date the CID the content ID and the site the file size so there we go so Although we're viewing it in HTTPS, it's actually um, on the IPFS server. So, yeah, HTTPS equals location addressing. But in reality, because this has got a CID, this is actually on the IPFS server. So um, this will be, I think they call it persistent. So it's persistent free decentralized storage and bandwidth for NFTs on IPFS and Filecoin. If you haven't seen my earlier videos, we'll just do a quick uh, whistle stop tour. NFT.storage is a brand new service built specifically for storing off-chain NFT data. Data stored decentralized on IPFS. So yeah, the whole point is you don't get a single point of failure and there you see multiple nodes and if you get a special browser called Brave, or you can get um, a Firefox plugin, it allows you to view IPFS. They see HTTPS, HTTPS forward slash IPFS.io forward slash. There we go. Um, and if you need some examples, they're down here. So, what I did was um, I copied that curl example, I tested it. And then I did curl to Python convert. convert. Um, it's just easy. Uh, easy. Just paste that in there. And why is it not done anything? Is it still loading? Perhaps it. Python? Oh, don't know why that's not working. Let's try the next one. There's quite a few out there. There we go. Um, so data, you just need to remember when you put in your API key, you just need to put in bearer into the, um, in fact, I don't think that's the one I used. Was it? Um, Crispin? I think this was the one I used. Ah, it's worked this time. Yeah, so when you put it, so that's your API key. Let's just zoom in on that. So you put, paste in your API key there, but before your API key, you just need to put bearer and then you need the quotes. So quotes, then the word bearer, then leave a space and then do control V to paste in your, your own API key. And all we're doing is if, you, again, you might've seen a recent video I did on uh, using post with requests. So rather, most requests would be requests.get if you'd been doing any sort of web scraping, beautiful soup stuff. So what you do is requests.post and then you put in the URL, headers equals headers, which is the header information, which is your API key, data equals data. And as I just showed, data is actually the image in bytes. So that was where I was doing the uh, read, the RB, the read bytes. Um, yeah, you see there on line 29, data, data equals open image. So image is going to be passed to the function and that's going to be, image is going to be coming from this variable called files and files is actually where I'm globbing the, uh, the output to folder for all of the JPEGs. So with all of the JPEGs, I'm going to 
iterate through those. I'm going to pass the file name of the JPEG to the upload function. The upload, yes, yeah, function, not a method because it's not in a class. Uh, and then we're just going to do data equals data, and then we're just going to print the response. Um, you do get quite a few error messages with this, but I was I was finding that I was getting several error messages, but it was still working and it was still uploading the image. So yeah, really important. Don't panic if you get an error message. Oh, that looks like your code's not working. Go across to nft.storage and you'll see that the image is still there. Now, as I said, the important thing is, is to log this because if you're going to be doing a batch upload using Solidity or anything like that, you will need to cross-reference your image um, with the CID. The reason you need to do that is because when you're that CID means nothing to you, does it? It, it, it can't do. Um, so you need to know what image you're dealing with when you're creating the JSON. And for instance, we could go through, instead of giving these new, um, numeric names, we could then go through and actually call them based on their features. So you could call it, uh, you could put the, the, you could create a name based on the hmm, skin color, the emotion, the eyebrows and so on. And then when you create your JSON, which is something which I haven't done yet, but we'll hopefully do in the next in a future video, you actually then know the name and then you can put in the JSON the actual full name and then the CID. So you need the name and the CID. And where did I make that? I made it down here. So all I did was I made a variable which was um, the CID, which that's actually, I got that back as a response. So I had to pass the JSON from the API response and add that with, I just split the image name just to get, uh, remove the output folder name. So I just wanted the file name. That gives me the file name because it gives me everything after the folder name, which is just the file name. Um, I put a new line character in there as well. Otherwise it just makes one big long line. Um, yeah, and then put the um, comma in there as well, just to create your kind of a CSV format, which is what we have here. Um, and then you just do log file, write log data, and make sure you use A for append. And what I should do is at the start, I should actually delete. Uh, yeah, I've added it in there. Yeah, I forgot I did that. Um, you remove the login file each time because otherwise, because we've got the A there, it's just going to keep appending. And then if you run this script several times, you'll end up with an enormous login file and then you'll have some CIDs that you don't want. And then when you come to upload to OpenSea or Rarible, you'll just end up with a complete mess. And you could have, yeah, you, you'll end up with more images in your JSON, more CIDs in your JSON file than you actually have. Um, so, good. Hopefully this has been informative and interesting. And if you've got any questions, drop me a line. Um, in the next, I have now put these on to OpenSea. Um, let's, before we go, I'm just going to show you those. If you want to buy any, be my guest because <laughs> as previously mentioned, um, these NFTs just sell for a crazy amount of money and um, I'm not sure if my crypto heads are going to make me a, a millionaire. I mean, that's the, that would be lovely, but even if it doesn't, it's been very interesting creating the code. Um, I had to upload these. No sales, like, that's disappointing. <laughs> The, um, the price, the buy now price is 0.2 ETH, which is, so one ETH is about, what? Four, four, I don't know, just call it $4,000. So um, that's about $800 for one of these, one of these badly drawn crypto heads. So I, at the moment I've just, um, yesterday I created, a, I think it was 125 or whatever, and I've just uploaded 10 so far just to test the water. Um, and obviously now I've added a few more features today. So uh, the other place where I've put them is Rarible. So you might come across lots of things mentioning mentioning um, Solidity, which is where you have to compile the code and all that. That's really where you 
need what, what you need to use if you are going to batch create a big batch of or a collection of images so that's my next job really is to try and learn that but for now um, I've done 10 manually and to be honest if one of those sales <laughs> sells rather I could probably then um, I'd have so much money I could probably pay somebody to, to show me how to use solidity if there's anybody out there who knows much about solidity then um, I'd be really happy to, or pleased if you could just explain to me the best way of doing that as a Python, a kind of a Python code, but I don't really know much else, especially about Solidity. So I don't know why that's not coming up on here. Is it because I'm looking at collections? I think I've up, I've created these wrong on um, Rarible. I, I should have somewhere. I need to actually say that they're a collection. Um. So yeah, lots of other stuff that's not selling either. Maybe the bubble's about to burst and NFTs are going to be <laughs> exposed as a scam. I don't know. I wouldn't buy one of these, but I wouldn't buy a CryptoPunk either. So, But just because I wouldn't buy one doesn't mean they're not valuable or not cool. I think they are cool. But it depends how much money you've got. If you've got lots of money, if you've got lots of money, then uh, yeah, why not buy one of these? It's it was fun and who knows you might be able to resell it for more I think as soon as somebody's seen that something sells um, because someone else has paid some money for something you don't think oh they think it's worth something so therefore it must be worth something so it's almost a self-fulfilling um, I don't know not prophecy but it's, it's self-fulfilling thing where because you know that someone else thinks something's worth something, then subconsciously you think it's worth something, so then you'll buy it. I guess that's why you get booms on stock prices and all those sort of things as well. So, um, yeah, crypto heads, there you go. So that's the 10 or the eight. I don't know where the other two have gone. But um, NFTs, and I will go off now and research how to actually do a, a mass upload and how to probably I'm gonna have to try and learn solidity because I think that is that and uh, using the JSON with solidity I think is how you have to do it um, yeah so we've got a few new ones now since we've written this code so uh, yeah we've got the monocle with the runny nose and the Mohican. Got a scar on the neck. So you see earlier when I was in Photoshop and I was just um, cleaning it up, that's not too bad. And again, the whole point of this is that this is kind of punk. The whole punk ethos is just kind of, just do it. Don't go too kind of slick. Um, So I don't think crypto punks were very punk, to be honest. I don't know what your opinions are, but they weren't quite as grungy as these, were they? I mean, they, these are pretty kind of, look at that. It's just rough, isn't it? It's pixelated, badly drawn. These were hand-drawn. This actual face was hand-drawn. Um, that's some clip art of an SVG. Occasionally, obviously the the reefer, the spliff, is a, a photo image. So we're kind of using hand-drawn with photo images and Photoshop being used crudely. But I've used, it's deliberately crude. So it's, <laughs> don't judge me. I quite like that one. Look at that with the green eyes. <laughs> I like this one as well with the, the grey hair, the, the kind of the, the grey hair matches the smoke. Uh, then we've got um, a green one with lipstick and yeah, there's the gold tooth. It doesn't look too good close up, does it? 
It's fine there because I had the white background with the, the mouth, but as soon as you have the lipstick, it just looks a bit rubbish. Yeah, so we've got lipstick, monocorn and Mohican. So all this is just made because of the randomness. Ah, that, that one's not so good either. I forgot about this. Um, you've got a scar on the hair, which is a bit crazy, but... Yeah, kind of a grey-haired person with a gold tooth and some wacky, badly drawn sunglasses. There we've got the gold tooth with kind of the afro and the runny nose. <laughs> Would anybody be interested if I made all 10,000 of these into like um, a poster or something? Or mugs? Would anybody like, like, uh, is it Teespring or something? These don't have to sell as NFTs. I could turn these into mugs and, you know, I could sign them and whatever. Uh, oh dear. That's a bit of a faux pas. I've used the extras with the sunglasses. And it, what it's actually done is, because of the sequence has done it, it's put extras after the... Let's just see, how did it do that? So, or why did it do that? Um, hair, emotion, eyebrows. Ah, uh, yeah, so stupidly, or not stupidly, but what I did was the eyebrows. I did four lots of eyebrows, and then I thought, oh, it'd be clever to put in some a pair of sunglasses. Because at that point, I hadn't thought about doing the extras category. So what it's actually done is it's put on the sunglasses as the eyebrows, which it did on line 29. See that? So it puts on the eyebrows, and then the monocle is an extra. So it does the extras after, so it's, it's building it up layer by layer. Um, but obviously that all adds to the uniqueness and the, the rarity. If you look at um, any of these NFTs, the, the thing, um, rarity is kind of a a desirable thing so there we go blue eye monocle I could look at these for days I don't know about you <laughs> I have to keep zooming in because they're only 350 by 350 I thought because again that's the beauty of it as you zoom, zoom in on them they, they look even more fuzzy and kind of punk it's the whole thing about punk so I don't think crypto punks are very punk, whereas I think th these are punk. Drop me a comment if you think they're just rubbish. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you kind of can see how you can create thousands of these unique images using Photoshop and Python. Nose ring there and the wacky eyebrows. Let's just see if we can find a really mad one. Yeah, there we go. So, monocle, blonde hair, oh, and a little bit of blusher as well. <laughs> I used to draw little characters like this when I was at primary school. This is kind of where, where the idea came from. Obviously, I just encrypt, I've kind of merged um, what we used to draw at school with um, kind of crypto punks and grunge so oh that one's pretty cool as well the green eyes <laughs> so thank you for watching if you've got any questions comments suggestions uh, drop me a comment down below thumbs up subscribe like all that stuff and in the next video I hope to be looking at the actual JSON, how to create the JSON file. I'll be looking at using Solidity and linking um, the that CID with the file name and just how to automate the upload to OpenSea and Rarible. Um, I did it manually for the first 10 and it's very time consuming and there's 
if you're not concentrating, you can make errors as well. Um, we'll talk about minting fees and things like that in the next video as well. And uh, what else was, gonna, was I going to say? Oh yeah, MetaMask. We'll just uh, go over installing MetaMask. In short, it's just a uh, file extension for Firefox or Chrome. And you need that when you connect to OpenSea or Rarible. It needs to kind of just verify um, your Ethereum address. And you need to just click sign in in various bits and pieces. Uh, just to recap, if you don't have an Ethereum uh, address, public key, then you will need one. If you want to sell these, um, that's subject for another video or there's other people out there who've probably covered it, who can cover it much better than I can. It's contrary to what people think, Bitcoin, the block, so, this whole series started off a blockchain. Blockchain actually is the underlying technology which these NFTs use, which Bitcoin uses, which Ethereum uses. No. Ethereum is a type of currency that uses blockchain. To buy Ethereum, you need to convert what is called fiat money. So that's dollars, pounds, rubles, whatever. And to convert traditional money into Ethereum, you will need to go to a site such as um, Coinbase, Binance, eToro, there's many out there. And I say, contrary to popular rumour, people think that these sites are really bad and they're used for money laundering and crime and so on. They do something called KYC, which stands for Know Your Customer. So when you register with these sites to convert your money, you will need to either use your, take a photograph on your phone with of your passport or your driving license. Um, and then there'll be sort of some two factor authentication goes on. And then once you, then you'll get approved, then you'll click a verification link, then you go back and then you add your bank details. Um, but you need to do all this. So don't just buy crypto using I think PayPal do it in the UK now, so don't just buy some crypto and think you'll be able to use this. You need to have, um, I mean, I even bought the um, Ledger Nano as well, so uh, it's a cold wallet, so you need to look up the difference between a cold wallet and a hot, hot wallet. Um, yeah, so that's a whole kind of, a whole big area which you need to kind of break down. So the first thing you need to do is, is buy some Ethereum so if you go on YouTube, look for how to buy Ethereum. That's one thing. Next thing obviously is install MetaMask. So buy, Ethereum, buy some Ethereum, install MetaMask. Once you've installed MetaMask, you can then um, use your Ethereum public key. And then you can go on Rarible or OpenSea and upload your images. Whether you do that manually, like I did for my first 10, or whether you want to do it with code. If you're doing 10,000, you'll want to do it with code. And that is what I'm going to be looking at next. And you'll probably need to start reading about Solidity and creating a JSON file, which then links with the files which are stored on IPFS, which is what I've just showed you just now. So. Yeah, it's not um, entirely straightforward, but I think the rewards are probably well worth the time and also you will just learn other skills which you can then use with your everyday Python programming. For instance, we used here, we used requests.post, we used a lot of randomness, um, we checked for duplicates. So yeah, lots of, lots of good things that you're just using coding normally anyway. So yeah, anyway, that's enough. Thanks for watching, do a thumbs up stuff, yeah, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.